So about a year ago, um, a few members of parliament came together to start a conversation. A conversation we've been having for decades, but they wanted to now reduce it into document, a, a law. And so they sponsored a bill before parliament. It's a groundbreaking uh, bill, hugely controversial, not only here in Ghana, but you know, internationally as well. It is a bill that will, in essence, outlaw explicitly the, the actions and conduct of LGBTQ community in Ghana. But in the last one week, you've been hearing a lot about a holdup as far as that bill is concerned. The bill that, as you know, is, has a, a wide popular support from across the, the country and religious groups, etc. Now, there is a major subject in controversy tonight which I've seen, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of uh, talk on social media, and it has to do with this. As we are speaking tonight, and we'll get some clarity, a few members of parliament should right now be in um, the United Kingdom on the invitation, you understand, of, the, of their parliament. Four MPs have been invited for the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association Conference over the controversial LGBTQ bill and other uh, matters rising. And many are asking questions. I mean, why on earth, at the time when we are considering our own bill, should we even bother about visiting other countries' parliaments or participating in the conference that, you know, we'll be discussing this matter, considering that it is the Constitutional and Parliamentary Affairs Committee, the committee seized with this bill, its chairman, ranking, and a few of the individuals there who are going there. What really is the motive of those inviting the committee members to come over. And so all four are members of Parliament's Constitutional and Legal Affairs Committee, including the chairman himself, who himself announced that he's been invited. And so part of the reason he says they need to hear um, whoever is inviting them before they progress with the bill. Really, we'll get into that pretty shortly. And some have said, well, if anybody has anything to say about the bill, all they needed to do was, like everybody else, also present a memo to the committee. We'll get into that. The minority last week claimed that the chairman of the committee is deliberately delaying the passage of the bill. It is in answering to this that he disclosed the, the existence of this invitation. He says, well, in fact, he mentions to me that the UK is a place he wants to go and, 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 and listen to them about because they, uh, we, we took a lot of the inspiration for that constitution from there. And years on, he mentions to me, they have um, legalized the activities of, of the gays. You mentioned South Africa as well. And he says he, he wants to get there and understand a bit more what they did when they were you know, going back on some of the key things regarding the LGBTQ community. So that's the chairman there, the man who has been accused. He himself has been speaking, categorically saying that you cannot blame him for doing his job in the right manner. He says he's simply doing his job. He wants to consult as broadly as possible before he proceeds with the matter of the bill. He also insists that the committee has completed the public hearings and will proceed with clause by clause considerations of the bill. That's it. But then we go, we drill down a bit because we want to really calculate, has there really been a delay? So let's talk about the numbers. The first reading of, of this bill in parliament was on the 2nd of August, 2021. We are talking about the 13th of June, 2022 now. So we counted. This is exactly 316 days. So this is just a year, almost a year now. That is 10, 10 months or so. 316 days has been since the first reading of the bill. Is that really abnormal? We have bill before parliament that went for decades, not passed. And so some may suggest this is really not um, unprecedented for a bill to lie before the committee for 10 months. But some also say, Considering how unanimously we have support locally among Ghanaians for, for something like this, this should be a walk in the park, an open and shut case. Really the case? Again, if you look at the first public hearing, so this was the first reading on, in Parliament. And then we move to the first public hearing on the bill was done on 11th November 2021. To date, we are counting 215 days since the first public hearing. Um, you know, started. That's seven whole months having passed. If you go globally, there is, we found this last week, and that was pretty much of a surprise, that they, there's an association. Um, this is the International Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Trans, Intersexual Association report. 
and they talk about Ghana as one of the places where they have a strong membership, okay? The Center for uh, Democratic Empowerment is one of the local groups set up as a member of this association to you know, promote their course in Ghana. We have the OHF initiative in Ghana. We have the Solace initiative in Ghana. So they are actually forming civil society organizations to promote their course and they are part of an association. So they are getting bolder, obviously, and their, their mobilization abilities is getting very sophisticated uh, as far as the, the movement of the LGBTQ issue is concerned. If you go globally, we've seen a trend emerge of countries beginning to decriminalize. So the UN, 28 UN member states recognize same-sex marriage. Uh, one non-UN member jurisdiction, Taiwan, has also legalized same-sex. You have 24, 34 UN member states provide some you know, partnership recognition and 28 states have joined an adoption laws while 30, 32 states allow for same-sex um, second parent adoption. Again, if you do look at the UN, 96, 69 UN member states still criminalize consensual same-sex, right? And we want to explicitly do so. Um, if you look at the 67 by excellent provisions. We want to join this, this group with what we're doing. In six UN member states, the death penalty the, is legally prescribed punishment for consensual same-sex uh, sexual acts. You have Brunei, Iran, Mauritania, Nigeria, up to 12 northern states only, Saudi Arabia and Yemen uh, in, that, in that category. Look at the map here. It tells the story of the global trend. And so we've got to have that conversation. It's been a while since we dug into this. But on the back of all the controversy, on the, of the billboards that was erected, the press conference and the, the invitation to our committee members who travel to UK to meet on this matter, and the suggestion that there's been a delay. Let's revisit this. My guests are seated after the break. My guest joining me in the studio is uh, Roxing Nelson Dafem Ekbo. He's a member of the Constitutional Legal Affairs, uh, Constitutional Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee in Parliament. Also joining me is Edem Senanu with the Advocate for Christ. They uh, submitted a, a petition uh, to the committee when this whole thing started. And I'm also joined by Samuel uh, Agbuche, who is the uh, fundraising coordinator with Amnesty uh, International Ghana. Samuel, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Edem. And, and Roxy Nelson, but thank you very much. Roxy, let, let's, let's start by explaining um, this invitation to go to the UK for this parliamentary uh, meeting over the LGBTQ bill. What do you know about it? Now, I, honestly, as a member of the committee, um, I didn't know. My, my other committee members didn't know either. And so we were all surprised on Saturday morning when chairman said um, openly on TV3. TV3, yeah. Uh, I, I think it's, just, I, I've forgotten how yeah. they call the program, but their morning Saturday political mm -hmm. talk show that the committee has been invited by the House of Commons in the UK and the leadership of the committee is honoring the invitation and, and so they will attend. Indeed, that they were to have left that Saturday uh, uh, evening, but for ticketing problems. So they were leaving Sunday, which was yesterday. And so we were alarmed, in addition to other things he said on the show. So on our platform, um, passions were inflamed. So he had to come back to, as it were, explain the circumstances. So technically speaking, the committee has not been invited by the House of Commons, by the UK Parliament. So even got the information wrong. What has happened is that every year, the, 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 the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association extends invitation to Ghana's Parliament. But normally, apart from the leadership of Parliament, whose membership are also the constitute leaders, some committee leadership within the, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, it's, it's the constitutional, legal, and parliamentary affairs leadership that are uh, often given the privilege to represent parliament. And so it's an annual event. So is of my chairman speaking like this, then he says that we've been invited by the UK 
House of Commons. And links it directly and to... And links it to LGBT. LGBT. You understand? So when I got... When I spoke with Speaker's Secretariat and got this understanding, I, I was shocked how he would want to link it and say other things that he said. But whatever it is, they left yesterday to participate in this annual Commonwealth Conference. But the, what we, we've gathered is that LGBT issues will feature as part of the sub-agenda of, of, you know, when you go to such committees, you, the, 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 the conclave is subdivided into other committees depending on the thematic areas. Mm -hmm. And so I suspect that one of the key things they will, di they will discuss at the constitutional and legal level will be our, our bill in Ghana's parliament. And so as a member of the committee, and as one of the sponsors, our expectation is that they, they become our ambassadors, the chairman, the vice, the ranking, and the deputy. They become our ambassadors of this country at that forum. They must carry the hearts and the mind of this country at that forum. Mm. They, they have to speak the mind of the majority of Ghanaians on this matter. If they say anything otherwise, then we'll have problems with them. And so um, it's, it's as simple as that. But you, you acknowledge that if LGBTQ subject is going to be prominent, they know where we are with this bill, yes. those who invited us. Yes. They know. You yes. know that yes. they will not hesitate to influence this group. Yes, of course. But others come. Against and, the bill. And, and let me say this. In fact, last week, the Canadian parliamentarians were here. In fact, both houses, the Senate and the House of Commons. To do what? They visited Ghana. They came to our parliament. They came to meet our committee. As part of the discussions we had, LGBT featured prominently. Fact, what, what did they fact, want? In fact, the high commissioner Esther was amongst them. She, she led them when they visited parliament. And they wanted to understand. And we, we gave them education. We told them the cultural values underpinning this bill. And they appreciate it. In Canada, LGBT plus rights were not, were not legalized 100 years ago. They frowned upon it until recently. So, so what the, one of the members of the delegation said that, well, it's a society we are going through a spectrum. We may get there one day. I agree with him, but for now... So you agree with the president when he says it, it, it's bound to happen one no, day? No, no, not that it's you bound say, to happen. <laughs> but it's a spectrum. Yeah. It may happen 100 years to come. Yeah. Yes, but for now, no, we are against it. Okay, stay with me. Let me, let me bring in um, uh, Mr. Senanu. So you've had the explanation for the invitation. And, and let me also say, yes. th the Zambians were also here two weeks ago. Okay, what did they want? They, they also visited and they wanted to... What understand. is the situation in their country on this? On this? They, 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 are also, they are also agitating, they also have LGBT okay. rights issues. Okay. So Uganda also intends to visit. So it's not as though other Commonwealth countries, other countries are, are not interested in what is happening. Mm. They are interested and they are visiting. So if the UK parliamentarians are interested, they ought to visit. You're confident, though, <laughs> that the, your leadership who are participating in this conference will hold the line? I'm confident they'll hold the line. They know the consequences. In spite of all the concerns you no, had no, about no, the no. chairman's... Yes, yes, yes. You know, I, 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 I respect my chairman. I've served on the committee with him within the past five years. Mm -hmm. He and I were under the leadership of Abdullah Abdalabanda. Yeah. And, and he knew Safusani. Yes. And, and he knew how we conducted things and, and business of the committee. So he's, he's guided by our rich history as a very formidable committee of parliament who espoused all the rights and, and laws that Ghanaians want us to pass. So they know. They'll hold the line and come back safely. Okay. Um, I'll come back and ask you yes. what, what makes you so certain. But, yes. but um, uh, Mr. Senanu, so that's the invitation to, to the UK. As somebody who submitted a, a, a petition and a memo, what's your reaction to that? Kindly well, unmute I'm, for me. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I have mixed feelings at the moment. I mean, first of all, I was clear in my mind I was coming to call for the resignation of the chairman. <laughs> um, I'm a bit puzzled as to how someone with his rich experience could confuse the invitation by the Commonwealth Parliamentary, whatever, with an invitation by the UK Parliament to come and talk about LGBTQI issues. 
Is it that there is some correspondence that Parliament itself, so to speak, is not aware of, and he has that documentation? Okay. I think it would be too much to assume that someone of his caliber could make that mistake in saying that we have an invitation by the UK Parliament to come and talk about this. Maybe there's some other meeting in addition to what is taking place because it just would beat my mind that someone of his caliber would be talking about going to the UK for such a meeting and get his facts wrong. And clearly, from where we sit, uh, that is giving our sovereignty away. Um, to the extent that my colleague there from Parliament is saying that there's something else, uh, perhaps we need to dig a little further. As far as I'm concerned, if the chairman is right that he took off from Ghana because of a UK parliamentary invitation, he should resign. Because that's not the kind of thing we put him in parliament for. Article 1-1, one, one, the sovereignty of Ghana resides in the people of Ghana. And it, it is in our interest, for our welfare, that they govern the parliament wherever they find themselves. And so this issue for us is not yet over. I'm, I'm a okay. bit... Um, I'm clear about what our colleague from Parliament is telling us this evening. What would you have to say about that? Just, just yes, uh, just I, I was too. In fact, I indicated that if my chairman is not interested in handling the business of the committee, he should give way, he should resign. Mm. You know, so, but when he came onto our platform and explained the circumstances, then, then, then we were shocked that, then how could you Yeah, so, so if the discrepancy between what he said publicly exactly. and linking it to LGBTQ yes. and what he says it, privately... It's what's saying panic, panic among everyone, including we, the sponsors. But what do we hold him to then? The public pronunciation, the pronouncements, or what he explains to you in the... Well, I think I want to be guided by the documentary, um, uh, the documents supporting the travel. Okay. You understand? And what they're actually there to do. Because my understanding is that what is ongoing now is the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association Conclave, mm. which is an annual event. But I agree with him that perhaps in addition to this conclave of all Commonwealth Parliaments uh, uh, in the world, there may be an aside meeting. Yes. You, you understand? There may be a, and it happens all the time. I mean, I mean look, I, I must say something, though, yeah. because I, last week when he was accused on the floor, and there was a big fight on the floor, remember? Yes, yes, yes. When I spoke to him, yes. He didn't mention the invitation, but I remember clearly, distinctly him telling me on air that one of the reasons why he's holding on, he wants to first hear the UK, the UK, the, how UK has handled this. In fact, what, the way he put it was that the UK, as, as a country where we borrowed a lot of our laws from, they themselves have made a U-turn to now legalize it. And so he wants to hear how they did it. Okay, let and me... Then, then that links to his disclosure on a Saturday okay. and this. So in his mind, he's going there to almost hear the UK government. And that's why he probably linked it on... Uh, and, and let me say this. It is part of our program to travel. To consult on this? No, yes. On, on, the, on the LGBTQ? On the LGBTQ. Where? Travel where? To Canada. Okay. To the US. To South Africa. Yeah, he mentioned uh, South Africa. And then UK, perhaps. Oh, yeah. And then Uganda and Tanzania. Why? No, because, for instance, when we're promulgating the Office of the Special Prosecutor's Bill, because it was a new bill and not a lot of countries have done it, it was important that... And it's, it's constitutional. As a committee, you need to do a thorough job. Yeah. So you needed to go and study other parliaments regarding the structures that they have in place and the law underpinning that to guide you. So, so he mentioned this at the committee sometime in March. So he's here to bring a program for us to be guided by it as to who and who will go where. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What the problem he has with the committee is that he, he, we, were, we, were, we, were, we were hit on the blind side on Saturday mm. without knowing that they were traveling, they were taking, going on this trip. Now the trip to had not been properly discussed. So I thought that in his mind's eye, he thought that even though he was, they were, they were, they were going to go for a Commonwealth parliamentary program, they could take the opportunity and visit the UK parliament. You could mm. have said so expressly mm. without any confusion. Yeah. Then people will understand you that. Then you are even saving the taxpayers money. Because if you, your plan and was to, for the taxpayer you. to bear the cost. Because otherwise they would have attended the Commonwealth program Return home. And then go again. And then go again. 
but but yeah. but but here is the question that many Ghanaians will ask you now that you've disclosed that the intention was to travel. Yeah. We know how passionate, committed the Western countries are. Yes. In fact, in, in, uh, at Tamil time, there were threats of linking this aid, etc. Yes. You know how they. Yeah. So for to, to to have MPs, Ghanaian politicians traveling to these countries to go and you know hobnob and you know get no, the, no, the no, concern no, is no, that no, if you say you may no. you may be no, that, yeah, yeah. That, that'll be perception out yes, there yes, yes. that we're afraid you may go. Mm. They will treat you with all this hospitality. Yes. Only for you to come back and soften your position on the matter. As a sponsor, have I softened my stand? But that's a fear people may have. Yes, they may have those fears. But I'm saying today when I sit here and speak. And I'm not hard hitting my chairman, it's because I've come to appreciate the circumstances. Mm -hmm. I have been on him the whole the whole week. Mm. What about the other travels though that you, you plan? What but must must it, that happen? No. So we can decide. We can sit here no, and no. do the research. Yes, we can decide that well from from experience or from what we've gathered so far, Zambia has been here. Uganda wants to come. The the, the Canadians have also come. Mm. I think one other country also visited recently and, and, and engaged us on there. In fact, even UNICEF has come and the UNFPA, they've all come to us. So we'll say that, well, given what we are experiencing so far, it will be proper for those who are really interested to rather visit us. Mm. So that we'll stay in situ, we'll stay home for them to visit. Yeah. And then we we'll hold we we'll hold the discussions. Okay. I so, mean, so that we, we also save the taxpayers money. money. From travel. I mean, uh, we uh, could do that. Uh, let me come to it, then I'll come back to you. And I'll go to Samuel. Samuel, stay with me shortly. We wanted to fix the issue with the good. I think it has been fixed now. But Adam, quickly on that, they, they, they committed plans to travel more broadly. Um, as, a, as as one of those with the petition, you, you what, what's your take on that? I don't know why they want to travel. Uh, this is a waste of our money. Um, we we know the position of all these countries. And there is a new the declaration position. of intention, so slow down. <laughs> uh, no, this evening I'm not in a good mood at all. That, I'm still very perplexed at the confusion with your chair. And, and yeah, I agree. I, I, I am too, but... I, I, I don't get it. I, in my mind, he should just resign. He's wasting our time. <laughs> Honestly speaking, the positions of these Western countries that have been enumerated, we already know. There's enough documentation providing a clear a understanding of their position on these matters. And so, for me, it would just be a physical visit for the purpose of the individuals who are going probably to enjoy the environment there. It cannot be the content they are going to receive from the UK or from Canada or from South Africa. All that information is available online and can be received. We've given enough time. And I think that the, the, the chairman ought to have been much more cautious and circumspect with what he's saying because it's been much longer than all of us thought. The amount of effort I went into, all the groups that went in, made presentations, we're not expecting that they will now say they are consulting. And the majority of the groupings or places or jurisdictions being consulted are now non Ghanaian. But our parliament is there purposefully to do work on behalf of the people of this country, in whose name and for whose welfare, you know this democratic system has been set up. So this is very unsatisfactory. Um, if he made mistakes or missteps, he should come back and come back well. Otherwise, we are extremely suspicious and we'll be calling for his resignation. We don't understand what this chairman is up to. Somewhere with the Amnesty International, let me hear you on this. Well, you have any reservations about uh, Parliament seeking to get other import and traveling out to go and, go and hear others on this matter? We may call it off. I mean, sorry, I, I want I want to hear um, um, Samuel um, with Amnesty International. Hello, Samuel. Yeah, Evans. Um, good evening to you and the panel. Honourable Dr. Pamako, I greet you, and Senano, I greet you. Good evening. Um, Evans, we don't we don't have problem with consultation with individuals, groups, and societies and countries, uh, both locally and internationally. In fact, I think the aim of this consultation is to have adequate perspective from all uh, countries that have either been successful in passing similar law or countries that have failed in passing or attempting to pass these laws. 
And so it is a good uh, attempt to learn from other, other jurisdictions. Best practice is what we are looking for. This is a law that is likely to impact or may impact on the life of people. And so therefore it is important for us to tread slowly, uh, not to run uh, too, too much. Uh, we've seen other bills in parliament that are stayed for decades. And um, as, as I said, this is a law uh, that we want it to stand the test of time. And so adequate consultation, a bit of patience, uh, locally and internationally. I'm happy uh, Honorable is saying that they want to embark on uh, going to Canada, US, and so on. We can learn from uh, uh, South Africa. We can learn. Well, we, we, we have a challenge with this line there. Um, let's, uh, let, we'll fix that. But, but he makes a point, though, about the need to hasting slowly on this. In fact, he speaks the mind of the chairman when he makes that point. Because last week he was accused of delaying the process. He says, no, I just want to do a thorough job. Okay, you, you, you can do a thorough job expeditiously. How? Yes. Because the referral came sometime in August 2021. Yeah. I think two or three days before we went on the launch. Yes, yes, yes. And let me tell you, I, I'm a member of other committees. When we went on the long recess, for instance, the Public Accounts Committee under the chairmanship... It's been Honorable, 316 days. Yeah, exactly. Honorable Averji. Yeah. And Honorable Averji didn't allow us to sleep. In fact, we, we, we hardly visited our constituencies. The man took us away. Public accounts were in Tamale, were in Sunyani, were in Takradi, were in Ho. First one of all Zona hearings. Mm. Between August and September... This year, he's taking us to, when we had the recess, the seven weeks recess, he's taking us to Tamale, Sunyani, um, um, uh, Takradi, and who once more, on the 2018. From August to September, he's going to take us round again for the 2019 Auditor General's report. That is how a committee works. When you have backlog, you take steps to clear it. We have a lot of memoranda. We have in, we've received in excess of 140 memoranda from people. The, public, the hearings that we've conducted, both public and those that we've held outside of the camera, not in, ca in camera, but that were not covered by the media, is less than 30. So, and, 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 and we are almost one year in, in respect of the referral. Yeah. The life of this parliament is only four years. We have already expended one and a half years. This parliament has just two and a half years to go. So if you want to move at this pace, no wonder he was reported last week in, by saying that he, he's not sure whether this bill can be passed in the life of this parliament. So when you say those things publicly, to the hearing of us, the sponsors, who are private members, then we, we, you, you send us into a panic mode. What is it that the committee can sit every other day and consider the memorandum before us. But the committee has other bills to consider. Exactly. He, in fact, he's one of the sponsors of a bill. Yeah. He and the ranking. I mean, so that makes his point for no, him. No, they have expeditiously dealt with those ones. Some of those amendments are a one-page amendment. Just one one-page bill. You've been able to program them and we dealt with them. We've had a stakeholder consultations. The bill that has a lot of attention and has attracted a lot of memoranda, that one is on the back burner. Is it? It is. His point is that no. he can't spend every single hour just doing this bill. But that's the only has he spent every single hour? The whole of the seven weeks that we won't break. He never convened a single meeting. That is my worry. I'm also, I'm also a friend to the subsidiary committee, uh, 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 legislative committee. committee. Under the chairmanship of uh, uh, Dr. Aini. Dr. Aini won't let you sleep because there, there's a lot of backlog for instruments that agencies want to have passed. Every other day, Dr. Aini will convene a meeting and will consider like five or seven instruments at a meeting. So between in one year, the, the number of instruments his committee has considered in a year is over 50 or 60. That is the way you work when you have a backlog. But he said last week that he called the meeting. He's called the meeting recently or twice or so ago. And your... your Minority members were part of the meeting on the, on the bill. 
Yes, but 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 the rate is, the rate at which it's moving. Look, we called two meetings in September, uh, in March and April. He wasn't even there. The meeting was chaired by the ranking. Yeah, but that's not. That's no, not no but but I'm making a point. The the anger of us, the of the sponsors and some other Ghanaians out there are the fact that it appears there's a lethargic approach to dealing with the bill in question. This bill is sensitive. It's very, very sensitive. So it needs time. It needs thorough work. It, it's it's, it's, it's like exactly. any other no, bill. No, but you see, pursuant to our order 125 and 126, when a referral is made to you, you don't have to take forever. You have to present a report. So, so present your report and allow plenary to deal, to deal with the bill. But when you are sitting on the processes that will lead to the preparation of the bill, by the time you, you realize there will be a lapse of time, Parliament, this, this, this Parliament's life would have come to an end. And the bill would have, would have fallen into disuetude. We don't want that to... You see, this is a private member's bill. It's not, it's not a government bill. So that's where the difference is. It's a private member's bill. It's being sponsored by private members who are members of Parliament. From both sides. From both sides. So this is not even a partisan bill. Do, do I, you make both sides, and this is a question I, I need to ask for clarity. Yeah. You have only one member from the and MPP side on, 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 as part of the sponsors, only one. Yes, but is, it's is, immaterial. Is, no, but and I guess my question... Uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Antim, for Is he still committed to this cause? Yes! Because I haven't had him In fact, let me defend put it, this. Let me put it on record that as far back as 2018, when I was in Canada, I was approached, and I was asked by Canadian MPs that, where is Antim Fodjo? Because you know he was he had he went public on your channel if you recall he raised the matter in fact he he he, he came to parliament with a statement on the LGBT activities mm. and that generated an uproar. This bill is a product of that work. So in team Fojo has been in the forefront for a long time. Mm. You understand? So nobody should say that this is like an, an NDC mainly sponsored or any. No, these are a group of young Ghanaians who think that. Look, my brother, prostitution, commercial sex workers, they are in this country. You know that. Mm -hmm. But they don't erect billboards and say that young girls and boys should come and join them. We know that people smoke marijuana in this country. We know. Occasionally, police will go and cordon an area off and, run, and, and ransack the area and, 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 and marshal all of them to a police station and, and prosecute them. We know. But they don't erect billboards and say that people should come and join them and smoke marijuana. But LGBTQ hasn't. Thank you. They have not done that, have they? They, they have. But they have in that, they that erect, billboard. No, they erected a billboard. They, they, they are they, form, they, no, they are forming associations. Yes, they have. Look, we have rights. Fundamental human rights yeah, in our but, constitution. But they, nothing bars them from forming no, an association. It's no, not illegal. it bars. It's an illegal activity. To form an association. Yes, we are saying that our rights are, are subdivided under economic rights. Educational rights, cultural rights, women's rights, children's rights, rights of the disabled, and the rights of the sick. Mm -hmm. Homosexuals should tell me under which of these rights do they the right that gay rights fall. But more specifically, though, you mentioned the billboard. The yes. billboard yes. is not an illegality. Who says that? Because First of all, the, the substance you know, on the do billboard. Know, do you know the elements of conspiracy the, the in, fact, the in prosecuting that The crime. facts on the billboard no, the doesn't facts. communicate in the criminality. Who told you? What, what is criminal Who told about you? it? They are, they are advocating for people to engage in a conduct that is proscribed under our Act 29. But that, that law you quote talks about unnatural kind of knowledge. Yes. There is nothing on that the, billboard there are, that, there are that, that talks hold, about, that, that talks about the act. Hold on. There are activities. There are activities. When you see somebody go to buy we, there's one thing that will come to your mind. He's going to smoke it or he's going to sell it. Yeah, but that's a suspicion. It, exactly. The suspicion is that the billboards that they put out there, the suspicion is that yeah. they, they, the are, they, are, no, they the are encouraging people not, not to form reason. an association no. that will it's engage. Enough, but you that, know this. Suspicion no, is know. not enough basis. Hey. But no, a, no, but you opened the door. You said that is suspicious. Yeah, that, that is, is suspicious. What, that is why a police... You suspect. That is all that a policeman needs to arrest you. On grounds of suspicion. Yeah, but, but, but you suspect it's, that this billboard is promoting unnatural canal knowledge. No. That's, Acti that's no, activities. 
that will encourage that. And that is also a crime. That is why we have a substantive crime and we have inquit crime. We have abetment and conspiracy. Anything you do, that will lead to the commission but you have of the to, crime. But you have to prove that. I mean, on the face of it, it's Yes, it's but, but, but we've shown you the billboard. Yeah. A lot of people ask, ah, but why did you go to do it? In, in yeah, front because of that's a question. Because, because you promoted you, it. You said, no, you know, and you took the journalist there we the, you and, see, and promoted maybe it. Maybe you sitting in the studio, you have yeah. your doubts. And I'm sure that if we had not gone to show the billboard, you would have said that. But where were the billboards? Apparently, it was not even one. There were about 10 in the metropolis. Who, who pulled it down, by the way? I have no idea. Okay. I have no idea. I suspect that they did. Themselves? Themselves. Or the company that they paid to flight it for them. Okay. Must have done it. Let, let me bring in Samuel. Under the cover of darkness. Sa Samuel, I lost you. I lost you earlier. Um, you were making a point that there's a need to hasten slowly. But why? I mean, the bill is already before Parliament. They've done 10 months already. He's been at the Parliament for 10 months. Considering how urgent it is, um, with all the memoranda has been considered. No, it's been Parliament over 10 months, but it's been before the, the referral. It was read after the, the referral. Yeah, the, from the first reading yeah. to now, it's been... It's been it's been telling so so but what so why why should there be any more any further delay on this when there's really consensus locally on this particular matter you you understand why the concerns are that traveling to the uk and all that is just you know wasting time when the matter is really obvious no um it wouldn't be a waste of time uh, if you look at the quantum of uh, memorandum of understanding that has been memos that have been submitted to the committee alone, uh, tell, tells you how people, how this bill has generated both local and international attention. And so a bill, a law that has generated, a bill, a law to be, that has generated this amount of controversy, this amount of interest from individuals, from groups and societies, both local and international, you will want to take your time to do a job that could stand the test of time. This bill is not one of such bills that you could just rush through within three, four months it is passed. No, we would have loved that we probably exercise a bit of restraint uh, to allow the committee to consult uh, much more broader. Uh, our only disappointment is the disagreement between the the chairman and the membership of the committee. This is not a bill that we should be divided, uh, the committee should be divided over how to go about it because they need a lot more concentration, a unity of purpose and togetherness to have a law that is representative of the needs and the aspirations of Ghanaian. But it looks as if they are divided. Uh, the chairman is not carrying the committee members Thank with you. them. Thank you. And, and that is a bit of a, a concern to us uh, so that we do not divide ourselves in terms of this bill and then in the, at the end rush uh, into the bills and then later we we'll regret that we should have considered this, considered that and so on. So our appeal to the chairman is to reconsider his uh, approach and uh, attempt to carry the entire committee uh, with him uh, so that we have a serene uh, state of mind uh, uh, to do a thorough, a thorough job. That's an appeal that we want to send to the chairman. And you were giving me your thought on whether or not it's appropriate to, as we've learned, the committee, you know, touring the globe and going to some specific countries with a view of, uh, of, of consulting even further. Is that needed? Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is needed. As I said, this is a, a law that um, we will want it to stand the test of time. Uh, yeah, but, we don't but want to come you, back you mentioned to... more than a hundred mem memos have been submitted already. What more do you need? I mean, and in all these countries, you you could access that information without actually going there in person. Yeah, um, uh, if as you agree with me, now when I write my essay, uh, when I was writing my Enfield in Human Rights, my thesis are there. But then when you, you read it and you contact me myself, uh, probably you might have more uh, to gain from engaging me personally than reading my thesis. And so um, I, we don't see anything wrong with them traveling to these places 
to engage people who have attempted the processes and so on, they might have one or two things to add to the thousands of memos that have come. As I said, we need a law that can stand the test of time. Let me ask you this as Omnis International. So what do you, what's your comment on, we saw the billboard last week. I mean, and by the way, it, it, the first time there's been this sort of um, very bold, obvious um, campaigning by the group in Ghana. Very bold and obvious. It always used to be in the shadows. No, it's not the first time. Last year, bold last year, and obvious? They actually opened office at... Yeah, I mean, we know. But, but they appointed a PR. But that, that, was, that was until the somebody reported them it was it was supposed so, to have been ha happening in the shadow no, I, I think the i think the point is that and, they, and are, the they are not were, letting down yeah but i guess what i'm saying is that for them now to sponsor yeah outward pay for. publicity yes. paid for yes. i mean um some of i don't know international what's your comment on that approach now by the lgbtq community at the time when this bill obviously is, is still in the, in the works is that something that helps your case or, or takes away from them uh, well, um, those of us who are human rights uh, activists and advocates, there are times that you wouldn't want to comment on certain issues uh, because of your own safety, uh, the safety of your staff, the safety of your family. And so uh, there have been these debates that are uh, uh, um, colleagues or, or, or people of that orientation uh, could have gone a uh, submarine uh, method, uh, practice their uh, whatever underground without provoking the sensitivity of uh, anybody. Of course, uh, even as I am a married person, if I want to have sex or whatever, I do it in the comfort of my room. I lock the doors, uh, sometimes <laughs> the lights are out, uh, the curtains, everything is down. You don't put out uh, no the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so, so there is this debate that probably they could have probably gone stop marine way. But then, of course, um, uh, the very, very, uh, very uh, uh, strong ones, so those who want to be open with their practice and so on, are coming out. And then, you see, the issue is that when you come out that way, you should be prepared to live with the consequences of the society, uh, you, should, you shouldn't expect that people will just embrace it. Who uh, uh, can think? Uh, they will definitely fight back. People are defending their religious background, they are defending their cultural background, and so on. And so the debate continues whether, as to whether they should practice their thing as submarine or go in the open. Uh, but then if you go in the open, be prepared that uh, people will definitely fight you. Yeah, I mean, Adam Senanu, that, that point there, um, I actually noted at the beginning, there are three associations currently in Ghana actively promoting um, the cause of LGBTQ and recognized by the Global Association of LGBTQ. And then we see a sponsored uh, outdoor campaign I mean, in, 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 in the billboard that, that we saw. So very open, very aggressive. That's your right, isn't it? I mean, I hear Amnesty even say that, you know, yes, you, they, you should be more subtle about it. But th that's, that's the approach they're taking. Does that worry you that even before the bill is, is activated and is passed, they they, that the LGBT community has become very, very bold and, and, and courageous, go public? Well, well yes. Um, I mean, they, they are major concerns uh, because... Um, Part of the reason of doing this is to make sure that our children and other generations don't get confused the way we see other places getting confused over 100 genders that they themselves can't even explain. They don't even have definitions for some of the things you're talking about. And uh, I keep telling people that as a scientist, someone who did biology, so much of this just doesn't make sense that I'm wondering, have I been transported into a film a hundred years away because my science just does not connect. It's, it's so confusing. Um, the billboard, first of all, there were specific color codings on it mm. that refer to particular members of their community. And so it's not just a suspicion. If you went online and took those color combinations and you checked, 
they refer to specific associations within the LGBTQIA plus. Evans is being aspect. a journalist. <laughs> Of course, yeah, I have to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and they had about four of those color combinations referring to four different constituents within their community. Mm. So there are no suspicions about it. It's clear what they were trying to do. Um, I think that what they surprised me, like you yourself have said, is who had the audacity, so to speak, uh, to want to put this out there in a, in a, in a continent where over 90% of Africans eh, this is not just Ghana. If you look at the data, even in West Africa, we are not the highest. I think it's either Sierra Leone or so that had 95% saying no to this. Um, governments, especially in democratic dispensations, are set up to do what it is that people want, what the majority believe is right and in their interest, and as it were, promotes their aspirations, is what we expect our governments to do. I don't think that in a dispensation where we have virtual opportunities, uh, we should say we need to physically have to travel to various jurisdictions to look at best practice. What do we mean by best practice? I mean, these days we talk about good practice because we are saying the context must be taken into consideration when you want to do something. Not best practice because what has worked in other jurisdictions may not work in your jurisdiction. So there are many reasons why I will not uh, go along with Samuel this evening. Uh, I know he also must play his role. Uh, I'm concerned, I'm saying that this, uh, this chairman must resign if he's not going to be able to pursue this agenda. And we'll be working towards that if he cannot come back and explain what exactly is going on. Um, I'm very, very dissatisfied with how things are going at this stage. I mean, let me ask you now. So they are going to go, they're going to return. What's going to happen now when it comes to this, this bill? Now, we have... Um... Programs outlined for discussion sometime Thursday, Friday. They are, they are due back on Thursday. Okay. The, the, the last meeting, I think, is on Wednesday. And so I expect them to arrive back in the country on Thursday. And then we can deal with the, the, the business of the committee like Friday or over the weekend. Now, given the kind of pressure the chairman has been, that has been brought to bear on my chairman, I think that it will be, it will be more... Um, uh, prompt in respect of the committee's work, mm. the, the frequency especially, it, because it, it is when we meet often that we can deal with the backlog. And we have, we have about eight more meetings to hold. According to the clerk, we have about eight more meetings to hold. Before we go to the clause by clause consideration, Still at the committee level. Still at the committee level. Before the report of the so committee. So eight meetings before the clause by clause. Yes. You know, so we still have a lot of work. That is why the agitation regarding the, the lethargic nature. You, you're certain that with what you just described, you can, this can be passed in the life of this parliament? It ought to be. It ought to be. And this bill ought to be passed by the end of this year. By the end of this but year. But that looks highly unlikely. No, it's likely. Because if he's able to submit the report in July, and we take it before we go on research in August, then when we come back in October, it will be one of the first things that will feature. We can spend October dealing with it before the budget comes. Mm. You understand? So I'm very clear on the roadmap leading to the passage of this bill, unless he's not willing to support the committee to deliver. Is the, is the chairman so powerful that he determines whether this lives or dies? Unfortunately, in our parliament, the chairman of our committees are so, so powerful. Are you not surprised that some bills go to parliament? They are read for the first time, referred to a committee, and nothing happens? Mm. It is when a chairman decides not to pay attention or prioritize that business. That will be it. As a member, there's nothing you can do. You can, you can go and condemn the chairman and do everything, but you don't have the power to co convene a meeting. Mm. It's only the chairman who can convene a meeting via the clerk. You member cannot tell the clerk that you want to convene a meeting. Do you have bipartisan support if this comes to the floor, to the plenary? We do. Ah, didn't you hear the majority leader say that this house will pass this bill? I've heard him speak, speak eloquently about it. I've heard him, I've heard Katie Hammond speak eloquently about this. I've, I, I've not heard any single member on the opposition, on the, on the government side, saying otherwise. Of course. Make All those who have spoken publicly have spoken in support. And, and of privately? 
privately well it's not reported so i can't speak to it but the men should you be more concerned about those you haven't heard no but they are a handful if i heard somebody because you know that you if know I that heard, they... if i heard somebody at at coffee shop says that you people you are wasting our time we have more more agent things this is also agent for me as a private member mm. i don't want my i don't want my my 15 year old girl who is in aburi girls to be corrupted i don't want that you, you understand? Allow people to, to take decisions when they attain majority. And don't, don't, don't entice them into, into a court, into a social thing that the entire country frowns upon. I just gave you some scenarios. We all know about commercial sex workers. Mm. We know of which smokers. We know that people have informed groups to go and rob, to steal at night. But, but they're all careful not to put up billboards. But when we get to but the problem is equating LGBTQ. But why shouldn't I? To that. Why shouldn't I? Because it's not it's not criminal. Yet. It is. It's a criminal activity. The end result is criminal. Why would you be a homosexual and not have anal sex? What 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 what, what is the end result? Yeah, but what about the lesbians? They let they also have sex, same sex. But but you know yeah, but that, that that conversation then will throw up all manner of unnatural up. unnatural kind of yes. knowledge that yeah. that street, yes. street guys and girls no, also no, do you no, know that no, that's... no but the Supreme Court has had opportunity to pronounce on it yeah. so when you are found indulging in it the law will deal with you okay but that, that, that this is obvious, always always a, a very emotive subject uh, we'll wait to see when the chairman and the, and the members come back what report they bring he's hopeful. He's confident that they'll hold the line. They'll hold we'll the see line. When they return. Enjoy <laughs> the rest the of your evening. <laughs>